We know there's been a ton of talk over the past couple of weeks about the future of TNA and what appears to be an ever-increasingly imminent sale of the company and questions about who's going to step in and buy it, what that purchase is going to look like, and what it's going to mean for the future of the talent, the future of the company itself, and the future of the wrestling business as a whole. And you know, there's all types of different reports. I think one common one right now is talking about WWE purchasing the TNA video library and then somebody else buying the company, namely a Billy Corgan, and taking the company and creating a whole new company and starting a new identity and all of that. Now, I'll be honest, we don't know what's going to happen just yet. I could see where that would make some sense for all parties involved, although I don't know if I fully buy that as a realistic option at this moment. It, it makes sense from the standpoint of Vince can get some content from TNA to fill his space that he has on the WWE Network, and he could show old footage of guys like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode, Austin Aries, things like that. So for the couple of million that WWE would pay for the TNA video library, they'll get a nice return on that investment. Will it be the type of return on investment that they got for paying four and a half, five million dollars for WCW and the video library all those years ago? Absolutely not but a return and a nice profit they should be able to turn out of it. So from that standpoint, it could make sense. Also, somebody coming in and buying the company and completely rebranding it, giving it a new name, sending it in a different direction, obviously makes a world of sense. I don't know if I buy it just from the standpoint of Vince would buy the video library but allow the company to still exist. I, I don't know. I mean, that doesn't strike me as Vince's nature. That hasn't been his history. Now, maybe it will be. Maybe he's gotten older and maybe he's changed and maybe he has no desire to put TNA out of business because they're so far off the radar anyways, it really doesn't matter. And it is a place that he understands where guys can go and ply their craft until he feels they're ready for the big show. I get it. You know, so maybe. I just don't know if I fully buy it yet. But obviously I think the one thing that everybody always wants to say is that, you know, Whatever happens here is they don't want TNA to go away. They don't want the company itself to completely fold and go out of business because it'll be something that'll be bad for the boys and girls. It'll be bad um, for the fans. It will be bad for, I mean, frankly, the WWE as well because, again, it's one less place for people to ply their craft in front of some form of national television audience and ultimately, as a result, will be bad for the business. And look, I don't disagree with those assertions because there's a lot of reasons to feel that way, especially when you look back at uh, when WWF bought out ECW and WCW in 2001. It was a disastrous thing for the business, and the business has never recovered. If anything, you could point to that being a seminal moment in the slow, gradual death of professional wrestling in this country. I don't think there's a, a just a coincidence there. There's a lot of correlation there. So I can understand the fear, especially those TNA fans that have stuck it through with that company for 14 plus years and just casual observers of wrestling in general that want to see it get back to the glory days of older, just would like to see more options, more choices, better options, better choices, and a better wrestling business. You don't want to see TNA go away. I'm not openly rooting for it. You know, it it's not something that would be ideal. <clears throat> it's not something I sit there and want to see because there's the potential of a TNA being bought out entirely by WWE, them folding up the shop, and then a lot of people involved with the company no longer have jobs, and now they're trying to find jobs, and it, 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 it's not something I wish on people. It really isn't. So, and you know, that'll always be the narrative is if you're a real fan of wrestling, you don't want TNA to fail, and you should want them to succeed and be better, and I think most people do. Some people that claim they don't, maybe are just kind of trolling. But at the same point in time, TNA's kind of brought that upon themselves that people want to see that company die and want to see them not succeed and want to see them go over because of the stupid shit they've done over the years, the way they've conducted themselves, the way they've carried themselves, the way they've conducted and carried themselves towards fans, the arrogance with which they have uh, presented themselves and their product, and this feeling of that they knew what they were doing even though they clearly didn't. I mean, I could go on and on about that stuff. So I get that too, where if a lot of fans might sit there and just kind of 
sneer and laugh and be like, ah, oh, that sucks, but then also kind of laugh out on it. I get it. I guess here's my thing. Is TNA dying really that bad of a thing? Now hear me out for a second. Again, I'm not openly rooting for this to happen. Because I know sometimes some people will sit there and just read the comment on the video, click on the video, or the title of the video, click on the video, and then comment on the video without actually listening to or watching said video. So let me repeat it a third time. I am not openly rooting for TNA to die. It is the less ideal situation for sure. And there is no guarantee that them going away would in any way, shape, or form have any type of good ramifications or consequences for the business whatsoever. So, just say that. But on the flip side, and trying to look at this from a big picture standpoint, looking at all the pieces in motion and in play here, would it really be that bad? I mean, let's face it. We're talking about a TNA now that struggles to draw, I think, less than 400,000 viewers every week on Pop TV. So it's not like there's some huge national phenomenon pro wrestling company. This is not nearly the same type of situation where you had ECW in 2001 was on TNN and they were getting over a million viewers each week. And WCW, even at the end when their product was so bad and run off a number of people, they were still getting three, three and a half, four million viewers most every single week. So these are two other companies that between them, their viewership for their flagship shows were over five million people. Mind you, a lot of fans that are no longer watch professional wrestling. This is entirely different. We're talking about a TNA just in a couple of years' time from their time on Spike TV to then Destination America to now Pop TV. You're talking about a company that went from getting, you know, a million to 1.1, 1.2, maybe sometimes 1.3 million viewers every single week on Thursday nights on Spike to now getting less than 400,000 viewers on Pop TV. I mean, they're almost getting the same viewership on Pop TV, which is a lot more available in terms of its distribution as a channel than Destination America and its overpriced premium garbage. Let's think about that. So, and I think a lot of people that are TNA fans that still watch it, they watch it out of habit, they watch it out of a disdain for the WWE. Uh, some of them maybe want an alternative to WWE, but don't particularly agree with the way ROH or other independent promotions uh, conduct or carry themselves. Let's face it, you know, in terms of feeling big league, TNA's product still feels a lot more big league than an ROH does. I mean, there's a lot to say for a lot of fans. They've been emotionally invested in this company for years, and it's tough to quit on them. It's tough to say goodbye to them, and you don't want to see it go. And I get that, and I understand that. But let's say TNA was sold to Vince, and the company goes out tomorrow. Okay, yeah, in the short term, maybe that does suck. All those TNA fans maybe have no place to go. All those people working for TNA are wondering, where's the next place for them to go? But out of that potential negative can come some potential positives, too. If TNA goes away and they're out of that spot, it creates the opportunity for an ROH, for a Lucha Underground, for some other company that hasn't been named, or some other company that hasn't even been created yet, to be able to step in and fill that void. And maybe they would position themselves in a way where they would be better equipped to provide a more effective alternative to the WWE and maybe someday produce a more viable, competitive product to the WWEs. Now, that's granted living in a bit of an idealistic fantasy world, but when you look at the misery and misfortune of one, it can represent opportunity and possibility for many or for the rest. So if TNA goes away, it doesn't mean the wrestling business dies completely. It's not a good omen for the wrestling business, mind you, but it doesn't die completely. There are still other companies. There are still other potential options. And maybe somebody can step up and fill that void and take that place and do something more with that place because in a lot of ways it's almost like there's an established hierarchy in professional wrestling now. It's like WWE is a clear-cut number one and nobody can challenge them. TNA in terms of the U.S. is the clear-cut number two or somewhat of a number two and nobody really challenges them. Some people might argue ROH is number two, but whatever the case might be, ROH I think in the grand scheme of the hierarchy of professional wrestling in general is still WWE way up here, TNA down here, 
ROH a little bit below them. So there's like a clear cut one, two, and three, and nobody's really trying to do anything, especially underneath WWE, to really affect any positive change that would change their positioning in that hierarchy, in that structure. So maybe this would be the shot in the arm that the business needs to motivate people to realize that they're not doing things right, that they are screwing it up, and that they're really causing some long-term damage to the wrestling business. And if they don't shape up, they're going to be shipped out just like TNA was. Sometimes fear can be the most powerful motivator, especially in the short term, for positive change. And when you look at a company like TNA going away, a company that's been around for 14 plus years, in spite of all so many obstacles and odds, it could even serve as a little bit of a shot in the arm to the WWE to knock them off the high horse a little bit and off of their arrogance in terms of, oh my God, TNA just went away. That's not good. We're losing viewership. We don't ever want to be in that position where that could become a problem, where USA no longer wants to give us three hours for Raw and two hours for SmackDown. We need to change shit. And ROH might sit there and say, oh, my God, if we don't shape up, maybe Sinclair is going to want to dump us. A Lucha Underground might be motivated to do even better. Again, it could give the business a shot of motivation and a shot of initiative and ambition that it so desperately badly needs while creating a spot, while creating an opening. I mean, yeah, you could sit there and say that all these talents losing their jobs is a bad thing, but maybe some of these people don't need to be in the business anymore. Maybe some of these people aren't just aren't good enough to get it done and don't deserve that national television spot. Ultimately, from that standpoint, if the talent is good enough, they'll find a spot. If the talent is good enough, they'll make it. And they'll have a future. They'll make their money. And if they're not, they shouldn't. And frankly, this is kind of the nature of the business world. It is the nature of nature. It is survival of the fittest. It is kill or be killed. How much longer can we artificially prop up a TNA that in some ways maybe can be viewed as potentially becoming a cancer upon the professional wrestling business? While that seems very harsh to say, if you really think about it, a lot of people watch TNA now out of habit. Some maybe watch it because they actually enjoy the product. Maybe a lot of them watch it because they enjoy the product. But this is a company that's lost over 60% of its viewership over the past two to three years. Where would they be in another two to three years anyways? Because the amount of positive change that would be needed for TNA to really turn a corner and really make a difference would require such a financial investment in terms of infrastructure, in terms of so many different things, that I just can't see anybody looking at it and determining it to be a sound business investment and viewing it as any type of real profiting, uh, money-making opportunity. You know, so maybe you can cling to your hope that WWE buys the TNA video library and that gives the company an infusion of cash. And then Billy Corgan or somebody else invests a few million dollars and actually buys the company and takes it and changes the name and does all of that. You know, maybe that's a way that TNA dies, but the company in theory still survives because they need to get away from that TNA brand any damn ways. This could potentially be the best thing that could ever happen both to that company and to the entire business as a whole. The name of TNA and that particular company, as it is currently, can die. So the phoenix of a new company could potentially rise from the ashes. And yes, I just did the phoenix bird signal. If you don't like it, fuck you! Again, I don't openly root for TNA to go out of business. And if the company goes out of business, it's not necessarily a great thing. But it doesn't have to be a disaster. It could potentially be a really good thing. Am I going to sit there and feel sorry or be really sad if this company goes out of business? Honestly, no. Because they've done so many things over so many years and made so many bad choices and so many bad decisions and so many mistakes that they ultimately have no one to blame but themselves. It's like sitting there and feeling sorry for somebody that's in bad relationship after bad relationship, yet they always seek out the same type of people that they've been dealing with in these previous bad relationships. At some point in time, you starts to lose the ability to give one fuck. And when it comes to TNA, if they live, they live and let it be and let's hope something positive comes out of that. But if they don't, I hate to sound like Ivan Drago in Rocky IV, but hey, if they die, they die. And if they do die, on the one hand, maybe it sucks. 
But it doesn't have to suck. It could be a good thing. It could be a great thing. It could be one of the better things that happens to the professional wrestling business in quite some time. 